What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh Rakuga back here on a Monday talking all things TV. Um, we uh, we got we got a fully packed show here. We got Game of Thrones, obviously. We'll be talking about that every week. Uh, Atypical, a lot of you guys tweeted us to talk about Atypical. DuckTales, little Rick and Morty, some Shonda Rhimes news. We've got all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, send me some Twitter questions in. You can you can tag me or you can uh, hashtag a Cloud or TV Talk. I'll be on all of that. Uh, before I introduce who's here, who's usually here on a Monday, uh, it was a kind of a crazy weekend here in America and in a really, really bad way. Uh, so if you're out there and you feel like that, that things are, are, are awful, uh, just know that there are people out there that are kind and warm and uh, try and hug those people, trying to be one of those people, the loving people, not, not the hating people, because uh, the more hate we spread, the worse it gets. Um, and I think, uh, I think we all need a little love right now. So uh, always here on a Monday, the lovely Emma Fife. Oh, that was nice, Josh McCuga. Yeah. That really warmed my heart. Oh, I'm good, really, really good. glad that you yeah. addressed that. And uh, dressed in the all lavender, <laughs> dark purple of House Griffin. Uh, that's David Griffin right there. Look at that shirt. <laughs> yes. That is that is something Pop special. Pop it today, boy. This is, a, this is what I call a cam shirt from Modern Family. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This, is what, this, is what, this is how cam dresses. Nailed cam it. Griffin yes. right Cam there. Griffin, yeah. Yes. All right. Yep. I love the, uh, the gingham, the gingham uh, cuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's With very the, nice. This is popping today, yeah. boy. I'm out. I, you what. I feel like you could make some really fashionable sort of superhero attire out mm -hmm. of that because from far away you could see how that could be like cap shield and you, yep. you I feel like you could incorporate lavender subtle. man <laughs> or this is probably something you might see at your grandma's house maybe her wallpaper it might yes. look like this uh, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. At the, at if you have a very trendy grandma trendy grandma, this is true. not this is point. not your typical mm -mm, floral mm -mm. hangover from yeah. the late 80s yeah. early yeah. 90s Tommy wallpaper. Bahama wishes he could look like that yeah this, that, is, this is not Tommy Bahama no. it's a that, too, yeah. that's his raging cousin Eric <laughs> Bahama he is uh, he is crushing it all right let's get into it um first off obviously let's talk a little Game of Thrones I was uh I was up north at my brother's place and we made my my niece and nephew uh go in another room as we watched game of thrones because it was like an adult show oh right? yeah and they kept coming in like is it scary we're like just get out of here just leave. just leave this episode the least action-packed of any episode we've seen this season mm -hmm. but had such unbelievable i did anybody freeze frame on the scroll from oh yeah okay yeah. so what mm -hmm. did it say so the scroll, I believe, because again, it's fast and the writing's kind of blurry and really sure. all you can see is Sansa. So my understanding is that that is a copy of the letter because it is established that Maester Lewin, who was the maester at Winterfell for a long time, yeah, he got killed. was, he did, he, a, a lot of people at yep. Winterfell got killed. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Maester Lewin kept very, very thorough records of every single written interaction between mm -hmm. anybody at Winterfell. So I believe that what it is is a copy of the letter that Cersei forced Sansa to write, right. like way back in season one under duress being like, you need to write to your your mom and Robert your brothers, dead, yeah. exactly, mm -hmm. and tell them that Robert is dead right. and that they need to bend the knee to me and accept the Lannisters as the rulers mm -hmm. and Joffrey as the king now. So gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. That's and the thing is what Littlefinger's doing, I mean, I think I'm sure a lot of people picked up on this because I know I'm one of those people when I watch TV shows, I don't pick up on things quickly. Right. Like with the jokes, <laughs> a little slow sometimes. Okay. But even I'm like, Veep's Littlefinger tough. is smart. Yeah. He, he knows what, what Ari is doing. He oh, can, yeah. Like, he knows. Like he's creeping in the shadows of that little like knowing grin of his. I mean, that's what he does. So he's trying to set the sisters exactly. on each other because he knows that Arya's kind of a thorn in his side right now she's snooping around trying to like get in Sansa's head like you just need to cut off everybody's head so basically what he's doing is he wants to get the sisters fighting he wants them to be you know at, at a distance so it's good for Littlefinger if this happens yeah, yeah. he's playing her okay big time uh, somebody tweeted at me and I, I I should have remembered the name but thank you for tweeting if this was your tweet uh do you think Littlefinger is a faceless man because oh yeah I just saw that tweet did also. you see that it was, uh, maybe you were typing yes. on as well uh, because his origins are in Bravos, apparently. Uh, yeah. I don't. Uh, so I don't know. If, mm. That's just a, something to throw to the panel. I, I think he's just a conniving. I think he's just a very smart guy. Yeah. I don't know if he's a faceless man. He's just smart yeah. on his own. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't need multiple faces. I yeah, I agree. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. he's his one face is pretty two faced as right. it is. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it's interesting too. I mean, the big thing, the big moment that everybody's been blowing up about today was a very small moment. I know. It was a little conversation. I little do a little bedtime reading. Yeah. Between you know Sam and Gilly, and that's when it was dropped that's when the whole big thing would drop with john's ever somewhat like when he's touching the dragon that was big but the part where gilly kind of says like uh, prince ragger 
She couldn't yeah. pronounce the name. I know, she pronounce it right. But she meant Rhaegar in the annulment. But then he's like, Sam's like, I've had a bad day at work. We're going to talk about right. this woman. Yeah. I was just blow so annoyed it. with Sam yeah. when he just totally blew through that. He had a bad day at work. He had a bad day somebody at work. Said, yeah. Somebody tweeted at me. I don't know if you guys were on this tweet too. And it was Jim Carrey like ripping out his hair like, <laughs> come on, man. Yes, yeah. like yes, that. yes. Mm-hmm. I was talking about that. I paused the sure. show and I said to my brother, I was like, I think she just spoiled the fact that Jon Snow is a Targaryen. He is. And my brother and I, we rewound it twice. And he was like, you sure? We still have haven't seen like cons- the fact we, that we he's haven't touching seen the, the dragon proof. yeah we, right. we still haven't it's not spoken word for word like sure. you are this person's son We're, like we haven't yes. heard those words yet uh, there's no <laughs> doubt in my mind that Jon Snow is absolutely Lyanna sure. Stark and Rhaegar sure. Targaryen's yeah. son however sure. because of this annulment and the fact that apparently they Rhaegar and Lyanna we're married, yeah. which means that Jon Snow is a legitimate heir. He, he's yeah. more legitimate than Danny. Yeah. Because Danny is Rhaegar's sister, but that's Rhaegar's son, so he has a more legitimate claim. Exactly, to the because throne. Rhaegar yeah. was the heir to the throne right. yeah. when King Aerys yeah. was the king. So, But ooh. Sam was having a bad day where he's like, Woman, <laughs> I don't care about marriage gossip. We're talking about my bad day. Work. Shit. And she's yeah. like, a steps. Steps. Yeah, they were steps. steps. That was yeah. the number if of you steps. had a plate of like meatloaf and beans, <laughs> yeah. like in a family, you like, I drive happy. a Dodge Stratus. Right. <laughs> he, throws, he throws it against the wall. Uh, that would have been great. I, I, I will say, you know, obviously we get a Cersei pregnancy, which is obviously Some she's people think she might be lying. Oh, I could. Yeah, she yeah. lies about everything. You know, using I, it as a way to get Jamie to bring Jamie in. That's what I'm yeah. thinking because I, I actually feel like, based on Jamie and Cersei's interactions mm-hmm. lately, mm-hmm. she doesn't care about Jamie. No, <laughs> like she's gonna no, toss no. Jamie aside at her earliest well, available convenience. And here's the thing too, and mm-hmm. I've been we've been talking about it and everything. I, I think that he's gonna be forced. He's the king slayer. He can also be the queen slayer. Yep. He's, yeah. he's going to be the one to kill her. He's, and he's not going to do it into her back. He's going to do it straight into her face. Because I don't think it would be face. cool if like, Arya got her... Because, I mean, I know Arya wants revenge, but she doesn't have any interactions with Cersei. No. So, like, her killing Cersei wouldn't have the impact no. that like, a Jamie or even Tyrion Or even would. Danny. Like, yeah, none of them would have... It wouldn't yeah. have the same thing as, right. as Jamie yeah, killing her. I totally agree. Her. We got to talk uh, about the Magnificent Seven, though. Yeah. 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 People kept going Suicide Squad in no. there. That's, no. when I, that's when I tweeted <laughs> out. I was like, for all of you Game of Thrones fans who keep calling it Suicide Squad, please stop yeah there's no there's no harley quinn in that group no right right also those guys are awesome and suicide squad was a terrible yeah yeah it was not great but the fact here's the one thing i always say my brother brought it up and i think it's hysterical they're going out in the wilderness where are their hats I they know. Need like I a don't helmet know. Or something to cover their ears. Now, see, I, I'm it's a man. Cold. I don't have a lot of hair up here. Yeah. So I know when I go out in the winter, even in LA, I have a little like beanie on or something. I keep my ears and my head warm. Those yeah, guys are like well, in the frozen north. And they, they have a lot of hair though. So even when or like a mask. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, even when that band of brothers with Thoros of Mir and Beric Dondarrion yeah. and the Hound arrived, they didn't have hoods when they got there. No. What are they thinking? I've seen winters that could melt a man. Well, put a right. hat on. I mean, right. last a little longer. <laughs> I mean, there has to be a North Face store somewhere <laughs> yes, up in, in the Westeros. North. There sure, has to be. Right. Yeah, it's gotta yeah. be yeah. North, north yeah. is in the title yeah. of North yeah. Face. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Uh, but we also need to talk about Gendry, because he came back this episode. Uh, I know. I, he's well, looking lean too. He looked like he got a little lean. He's yeah. looking good. He, yeah, he's looking <laughs> he cut good. a little yeah, tighter. He good, yeah. He's up there. He's like, I swing this hammer now. And you're like, Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Tyrion's like, he'll do. Yeah, <laughs> he'll yeah, do. Yeah, well, and it was do. so funny too that scene on the beach because, first of all, I have to say, Sir Davos was killing it, deceiving yeah. those men. Yeah. yeah. I was watching and being in my heart, feeling that I won. Like, that's deception goals right mm-hmm. there. Yeah. <laughs> is, is yeah. Davos He's a true on the smuggler. Beach. True yeah, smuggler. he And is. I also want to know is fermented crab a thing? Like, should I get that oh. for my honeymoon? What's going on here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'd try that. You might get sick. Yeah, but then. Because the hammer was in the boat, I was just waiting for Gendry yeah. to bash in some faces with I the know. hammer, and mm-hmm. I was not disappointed. We got we got Tarly's melted via Jakaris, and yes. then we got two hammer throwing, but that's all we get, because now we have our Magnificent Seven, our, uh, I was calling them the Mighty Ducks, because, you know, they fight on yeah. us. Mm-hmm. But uh, they go out there, and uh, I don't know, this 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 suicide mission... It's not a safe one. It's not a good. It's no. not a safe mm-hmm. one. Hey, let's but just listen, go approach if you the army see, dead and snag a straggle. Let's just get like one guy. If just you wanted to him. see seven dudes go out there, those are the seven dudes. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, if Ned Stark was still alive, give me a little Ned yeah. Stark out there mm-hmm. swinging a blade. But and the next two are going to be the big long ones. So we yes. have a. I believe it's like a hundred uh, hour and fifteen minute plus, and the next one after that's almost an hour and a half. Oh, so we wow. get the we get the much longer episodes for the last movies, two. Movies yeah. Game of Thrones movies. Two more episodes, guys. All right, let's talk this final Defenders trailer. Uh, that we got, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's uh, Ray, 
Ray is one hell of a. He's he's got he's got a, he's got these dynamic pictures ready to go. I don't think. <laughs> see, I've seen the first four episodes, and uh, next week we're shooting. Then uh, obviously mm -hmm. after on the Monday, so they'll all eight will be released on the channel by like Monday afternoon. The mm -hmm. first our first one's already up. The premiere first one's up, up, and then yeah. uh, th two, three, and four will be up mm -hmm. this Friday, and then uh, five, six, seven, eight will be Monday, Tuesday. So. What we've seen in the final trailer, we've already seen in the first four episodes, so they haven't few, showed few us anything. Scenes, um, there's a few scenes that we haven't seen, that some action sequences that yeah. I assume happen later on, but most sure. of it, especially the stuff in the restaurant, we've already seen before. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't crazy, like, Game changing, nor was it very different from I'm the other. I'm trying to figure out where this trailer was released too, because it must be a TV trailer because Netflix always puts their trailers on their YouTube yeah, page, and, and this one's not on their YouTube and page. And it's also so. not on the official Netflix page for Defenders. Right, yeah. The only thing I will say about this trailer, and it is a positive thing, is I think that it very much helps establish the tone of what mm -hmm. you're going to get with Defenders, where you do have this sort of it's kind of fun. Like it doesn't take itself too, too mm -hmm. seriously, mm -hmm. especially in regards to Iron Fist. They're making fun of them. It, yeah. Right. <laughs> wherein I think that that was where Iron Fist kind of failed because you've got this white boy going around being like, I'm a martial arts expert. Yeah. I'm the immortal Iron Fist. Yeah. And right. nobody like bats an eyelash. And in this, they're all like, well, you'll like it when you get bro. further in. Cause you'll see when Luke, when he meets Luke Cage, their interactions, because they come from very different worlds, yeah. they kind of collide, but you can see, you know, the whole Heroes for Hire thing. Maybe, maybe they'll do yeah. that in a future season or something, but I think you'll like it. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, could Hannibal be coming back to TV? Now, last week, Brian Fuller kind of teased via tweets, like, we had to wait until two years after the final season. NBC camp canceled it after three seasons, and there's a giant, I mean, the Hannibal cult following. If mm -hmm. you ever put anything online about TV anywhere, there is at least one person that will oh, yeah. comment, bring Hannibal back mm -hmm. or Hannibal for life or whatever. Personally, I never watched the show, mostly because I mean, it's not your style. Yeah. It's not my style. <laughs> right. It really is not it's my style. It's a beautiful show, all. man. It's, it's really But well I may, done. because it's it has such a cult following, and if it does come back. It's not a horror. It's not like jump scares. No, to, yeah, it's, it's just dark. It's, it's just a dark. psychological yeah. thriller. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I. It's Silence of the Lambs. And he, you know? I like, yeah. I, I like his portrayal better than Anthony Hopkins. It's really? different. Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah, is Mads Mikkelsen great. kills it. Okay. He's yeah. Great. So I, I think I'm gonna get in and start watching the show because if it does come back, where do you think it'll come back? It won't be network TV. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think it would be a Netflix or an Amazon. Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the seasons right now, if you want to watch them, stream them. They're on Amazon Prime. Okay. You yeah. can stream them. So I assume it would go to Amazon. Sure. I would hope. Uh, I mean, it's 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 so well done. Jillian Anderson is in it. She kills it. Uh, but it's just a great All show. All these people are pretty busy now, too. They and a busy, lot of yeah. times when stuff like this happens, the re there's only been maybe two or three that have come back from <laughs> like a television purgatory and <laughs> rebrand. The only example that you can say is like the overall success is Family Guy. Yeah. Right? Sure. This comes back and it's not as good. Yeah. Does yeah. it tarnish the legacy? I, I and mean, Brian Fuller's busy. He has American yeah, Gods. He's a busy guy. Yeah, yeah. I. I think that's such an interesting point you bring up to Makuga about if it's not as good, does it tarnish the legacy? Because mm -hmm. at the same time, the thing that you like still exists. Yes. But you do look at things like Arrested Development and their revival. I was and just going to say Arrested it, Development. It, and yeah. it's just not. It's good. It's, it's good. It just doesn't it's have not. the same charm as the original. X-Files for me. X-Files, yeah. exactly. No, this hasn't been as this much time. This 24 time. legacy like thing years. they just brought back. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. There, there are ways you can tarnish the legacy of an amazing show. And mm -hmm. Hannibal right now is almost like in this beautiful little hamlet yeah. of an eggshell of mm -hmm. like, oh my God, it was everything was perfect. And then they bring it back. And it's like, well, Brian Fuller only did a little bit. Yeah, and he's busy with American Gods. Yeah. And he's doing other things. Yeah, It's going to be tough. It's tough. All right, let's talk atypical. Uh, we I, I watched four episodes. A new show on Netflix about um, a boy on the autism spectrum and his family and how they deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Rappaport, uh, uh, what's Jennifer Jason, Jennifer, Jennifer Jason, Jason Lee, Lee yeah. who plays probably one of the most insane mothers in a bad way that I've seen on TV in a long. She's so time. good, especially after like the Hateful Eight and all that. I mean, she's such a good actress. She's, she's yeah. a great, great actress, actress because I hate her, and you're yeah. kind of supposed to hate yeah, her. Yeah, you're supposed to hate her, yeah. right? Uh, I will say kind of the, a little bit of a breakout performance here is Michael Rappaport. Because usually in stuff, he's kind of just, he's usually they like dumb him down or mm -hmm. they make him like the loudmouth jerk yeah. or something like this. He is, he's my favorite character in the show. He and the daughter have an amazing they relationship. And, then, and yeah. he tries so hard yeah. with the son. And he's mm -hmm. like a genuinely good dude. And 
the wife, I mean, he even tries hard with the wife. Because a lot of times in these situations, it's like the husband is kind of an ass. Yes. And like they make it really easy for you to understand that the mom has the affair, right? Mm -hmm. Not in this show. No. Definitely not in this show. And that was the thing with Michael Rappaport's character was I found that in some ways it was frustrating because he maybe wasn't as actively participating in dealing with raising an atypical son. Sure. But at the same time, you also felt like Jennifer Jason Lee was kind of freezing him out. She wasn't really giving him a chance to be no, involved. No. And and it, it, they sum it up so well. I want to say it's in the second or when third episode says, when, when, uh, when the son is like, I want to talk to dad. Yeah. yeah. Instead of mom. When and well, and Michael Rapport says, I think it's episode two, yeah. when he says, I have an autistic son too. Yes. Right? Yeah. And... I, I really, what I really enjoyed about this is there, there are so many different ways that you could have tackled this kind of subject, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the way that they had the sister portrayed, I thought was Ugh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love. I the really sister, thought Casey. she she was She's amazing. Great. And they could have really mm -hmm. done this in a very different way. And I thought I thought it was very smartly written and and very very well done. I didn't think I was going to like the show, and immediately was was kind of hooked. Yeah, for me, I think that the the brother sister relationship was one of my favorite things about it because, and you know, my my brother and I are both not autistic, but yeah. I have a very close relationship with my brother. And so the fact that they portrayed Casey as being really protective of him, but not in an overbearing yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. way. I almost forgot it, that she's younger. Cause I was yeah. like, she was older. I'm like, no, 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 yeah. wait, she's like a sophomore and he's a senior. He's 18 in the right. series, but she's, well, one, she's taller, and she carries herself a little bit, you know, right. bigger. I thought she was older, but she's yeah. she's a little sister. What did you think of this whole thing, then? Oh, I loved it. I finished it. Cause, yeah, because you, you watched it right yeah. away. Yeah, I was yeah. like, this is so, it's so charming. I mean, because the kids on the spectrum, the autism spectrum, we've seen shows like this before. Parenthood, of course, did it very yeah. well. There's a British show called The A Word uh, that has, I think, Chris uh, Eccleson's in there from yeah. Doctor Who. It's a very good series as well. So this is another show dealing with a high-functioning autistic kid, you know, brilliant, mm -hmm. super smart. But it's just done with such heart. Like you said, you, I, every character is important. The therapist is great. Yeah. Oh, I love her. She's great. Um, yeah, she's the a great girl character. From Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that what she's yeah. doing? Okay. Like all the characters are interesting. As you get cute. towards the end, when he does start, you know, he's, the whole thing is he's trying to start dating. He does, you know, start dating yeah. more. The girls that he interacts with are very interesting. I mean, everything's yeah. just fascinating. I love the whole series. I, I do too. To come I, back. It's, it's kind of, and it's really <clears throat> an, a really cool character study on being yourself. Yeah. yeah. Which I really do. Like, some of the things he, he, he's autistic, but some things that he blurts out and says, I mean, it's stuff we all think. I mean, yeah. you can relate to him. It's like, yeah. I definitely relate. I don't, I don't say it out loud. Yeah. Sure. But I relate to but him for sure. But you do relate to it. Yeah. And I think that the show did a really good job. And, and again, particularly with Michael Rappaport's character of mm -hmm. addressing the fact that everybody has these feelings and everybody's weird. And the, I, this is a spoiler, but mm -hmm. it was really funny. The scene where he decides that he's in love with this therapist and his, he doesn't tell his dad yeah. who he's in love with. And he's like, oh yeah, I kind of stole your mom away from her... Yeah. Awful ex boyfriend in college. And then, like, he so, <laughs> takes it so literally that he writes, Wait, I, I gotta know, write this down. Exactly. I'm gonna write this down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then they go yeah. with the chocolate covered strawberries mm -hmm. and literally break into her house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a so sex good. fruit. It's <laughs> a sex fruit. Yeah. <laughs> it's so oh, good. Oh, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, watch Atypical. I can't, yeah. I honestly yeah. uh, highly, highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, also his friend at the tech store. Oh. Uh, uh, Hysterical. He's great. Because yes. like he's, he, he does care about him. Yes. He is his friend. You know, yeah. I, I see that he has friends. So yeah. well done. Yeah. Okay, let's get into some weekend highs and lows every Monday, uh, as per usual, when we had the weekly show, now daily. Uh, I A lot of people are asking what I thought about the Orphan Black finale. Uh, I'm going to have Perry Nemiroff here on Thursday on this uh, on TV Talk. She hasn't been on in a long time. To talk the finale, talk the whole series, break it down a little bit. I will say that I really enjoyed the finale. That the final season was a little up and down, but I thought the season finale, was, the series finale was fantastic. Uh, no, you could throw up a spoiler alert. What the heck? The fact that they make me, they were like, the best is yet to come. Wait till the final credits. Wait till after the credits. It was a really creepy dance video. It had nothing to do with the series. So, uh... That's all. It's, it's for the fans. Yes. yes. For the fans. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clone Club. Send in your twerking video. Here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, I know I'm the only one that watches I'm Dying Up Here, but again, a show that really impressed me in the season finale was, was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Melissa Leo, um, I don't know if she'll get nominated for anything, but she really came around. She started out very like, I'm a New Yorker. And now, but she really came into her character, mm -hmm. like all kind of great actresses like she does. Boom. I know these highs and lows right now are kind of on me. What I did learn watching the open the PGA Championship this weekend is that everything on the CBS slate for the fall looks terrible. 
Uh, it was even my brother was like, "That's going to be on TV." I was like, "Yeah." And it'll be the number one watch in the show. <laughs> yeah, they'll yeah, all be yeah. picked. Yeah, they yeah. They, yep. they did a young Sheldon commercial every commercial break. So there you go. So funny because I feel like critics Whoa. panned the Young Sheldon trailers. The trailer actually looks. I actually like that trailer. I thought that I actually like that looked trailer. way better than Big Bang Theory. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, a little yeah. more charm like, to it. The relationship yeah. between Sheldon and his dad kind of reminds me a little bit like atypical. Yeah, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna check that yeah. show out. Yeah. I'm sure. Check it out. Everything else though, yikes. Yeah. All right, we got Ducktales. Oh man. Oh, <laughs> so it took. I mean, it took me a second to get into it. I'll okay. be honest. Like it was just different. The animation's different. Um, the voices are different, obviously, because it's been over 25 years since right. the series ended. So what it if took one me... of the brothers was like, uh, I'm still you. Well, their voice, and that's the thing, like their voices were more high pitched than the original. Yeah. They're a little bit lower in this they one. It took me a second. But more... once we got to episode yeah. two, the second half, I was in, I'm like, this is DuckTales. And then I just, I was yeah. fine. I loved it. I yeah, I, thought, it. I actually really enjoyed the setup of the first half of the episode because mm -hmm. they don't even play the credits until halfway through because okay. it's sort of two episodes. Right, yeah. Even though it was all aired as a single hour long special. But sure. I, I loved it. I felt like it was DuckTales acknowledging that technically this is a show for kids. Kids can watch this show, but our primary mm -hmm. fan base, they're in their early 30s. Mm -hmm. So it's. I thought the humor was really smart. And mm -hmm. it again, it felt like DuckTales, but just relevant to the current right. generation with things like, oh yes, this this magical gem mm -hmm. is actually a, a source of clean, renewable energy. Yeah, <laughs> you know I, mean, what I mean, I can't remember her name, like the, the maid. She's a little bit, like a little more- Oh, Mrs. Beakley? She's serious, yeah. like you don't mess with her. Uh, it's like, I'm uh, not your secretary. Yeah, and she's I, British. Yes, she's and the, the, the rivalry between the two Scottish ducks mm -hmm. was I love amazing. it, yeah, <laughs> I love it. Boom, DuckTales. Uh, Rick and Morty. Oh my God, it was- Season three, episode four. Vindicators, the Vindicators. Vindicators. Yeah. But it was Vindicators three, three. Yes. not two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this show is so brutal. It, it, I will tell you what. This show takes no prisoners, gives zero fucks. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm so bummed in myself that I like wasn't a fan since day one because yeah. this was this episode was so fun. Mostly because I feel like I've been blacked out drunk and my buddies have been like, "Yo, you talk about that person all the time when you're drunk." I was like, "Who? Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. what, what person are you talking about?" It was so funny. This this episode. Uh, Again, it, uh, you think that it's going to have a funny ending. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, but no. this is super high. But yeah. again, it, it's Dan Harmon making really biting commentary on big budget superhero yes. movies. Mm -hmm. Yes, 100%. Yeah. It was... It was you destroyed a whole planet. It was a shapeshifter. Like, the guy, you know? like the, the ghost train guy, oh like, like blows the whistle and this ghost train just comes. He's like, oh, the ghost train guy was going to do a ghost yeah. train. I didn't million see that coming. Yeah. It's just called Million Ants. Million Ants. Yeah, million. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, you're not just like weird melty guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny. We were in love. It's so good. It's oh, such man. a good show. So well done. Uh, really, really fun. I, I will say the, the, the mother and father uh, dynamic is still, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just fantastic. All right. Poldark. Poldark season season finale was last night don't worry i'm not gonna spoil anything but it, it's done another season's done but guess what we're getting another season it was already picked up after uh the first season so still oh punching boy. flowers yeah. still pole dark, dark. Yeah. Pole dark we'll, we'll break down we'll do a little more breakdown on david's great british breakdown on, oh yeah yeah we'll, uh, talk, tomorrow. Tomorrow. yeah. we'll talk tomorrow yeah. Yeah. uh twin peaks emma yeah, well, you, there's, oh yeah, a, I'm watching. Yeah, okay. there's a plot now. Okay, well, well, yeah, we're getting we're definitely getting more plot points. Naked people in the woods. Sure, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, they they broke down kind of the first Blue Rose case, and and there's some ties back to Firewalk with Me, mm -hmm. which was the prequel film about Laura Palmer, sure. and you know, again, a good portion of the show is just people. Sitting around in a room mm. talking about stuff. Weird stuff. But <laughs> crazy cameos. My favorite woman in the world shows up. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so yep. I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, She's no spoilers. Pretty, okay. pretty, pretty good. Yeah, pretty, 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 good. pretty good. All right. Uh, Shonda <laughs> Rhimes is leaving ABC That's for big. Netflix. Now, the shows that she created at ABC are staying there yep. on the Shonda block, but she's going to Netflix. Now, I, originally, I'm like, ah, who gives a shit? But because I don't really watch those shows. But I know that a lot of people watch Scandal, and mm -hmm. tons of people watch Grey's Anatomy, and they're very popular, and they are well-received shows, and I don't want to uh, knock them, but I, it's just shows that have slipped from me, because I don't particularly love network television mm -hmm. in that sense. But her saying that going to Netflix opens her up, that she couldn't really do much more at ABC creatively. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to see what she does, because you know Ava DuVernay uh, crushes it. Um, you know, give give creative people an outlet to do something mm -hmm. insane, and the fact that she has an unbelievably well proven track record in a, in a genre that I don't particularly right. love. Yeah. Shonda said bit. that she did this because she had reached her creative peak on network television. Yeah. Now she wants to the chains are off, and she can yeah. do what she wants. And I feel like again, as you say, Makuga, she does have such a strong track record that I feel like 
it's going to be really interesting to mm. see what she does mm. with a lot more creative freedom. Yep. Yeah. All right. And finally, uh, Robert Kirkman is heading to Amazon. Obviously, The Walking Dead isn't going anywhere, no. uh, or Fear the Walking Dead, if you're the one guy that watches that. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> apparently, Robert Kirkman, it's sort of like Netflix last week buying Millar. Mm -hmm. Now, Amazon is taking on the Kirkman he because he has a ton yeah. of IP. He does. And I, I think, again, it's it, the Millar parallel is perfect because it's one of those situations where okay, yeah, this is cool. We're going to maybe get some new, interesting mm. Amazon original programming out of it, but it's not that big of a shakeup from the point of view that Robert Kirkman's most successful property right. currently on television is The Walking Dead, yeah. and that's staying exactly where it is. Yeah, so, so we'll see. It's but a lot of potential. Yes, a, a lot, lot of potential. potential there, yeah. yep. All right, uh, let's do some Twitter questions, um, or at least one or two. So... Thank you guys for always sending in Twitter questions. Sorry, I'm just reading. Some of these are very good. Um, hashtag at TV Talk. Thank you guys always for watching and for sending these in. Uh, this one comes from Francisco Lopez, at FJ Lopez 1505. Hey, Josh McCuga, after what happened this past weekend, do you think HBO will not green light the Confederate or Confederate? Uh, I think it's kind of a, it's a very good question. Honestly, there is a lot of people out there that are inspired in wrong ways from TV and movies. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the guy drove a car into people is very Mr. Mercedes-esque. And yeah. uh, it's unbelievably terrible. And I think by doing this, people see this as like, oh, what if it was? I, I agree. Uh, this could be a good idea. That's the problem. And that, that was the thing. And, and I think I, you can see. It's all see censorship. I mean, it's Grand Theft Auto for years. You can pick up hookers and kill yes. them. You can go. I mean, Grand Theft Auto, you can run. You get points in the old games for running people over. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 that, it's, that horrible, yeah. I mean, it's a horrible thing that happens. Yes. But it's all about censorship. And Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would <laughs> say it, it definitely has a. It's probably in HBO's execs' minds. It is. Mm -hmm. And as you say, it does bring to light the fact that, and we've talked about it on the show before, that unfortunately, there are those people that would get the wrong message mm. from a show mm -hmm. like Confederate being mm -hmm. an alternate his history and look at it and go, well, this is how the world really should have been. Mm -hmm. And so, and unfortunately we see with the events that were demonstrated this weekend that those people exist and yeah. they're, they are very much out there and active mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's, it, ugh, it's HBO. Ugh, it's I, tough. It's, yes. it's honestly, sometimes it may not be worth the backlash yep. that's all all right yep. let's do one more question a little bit lighter of a question <laughs> uh, this one comes from jim mench man uh sorry man clark i saw an i there that's my bad jim man clark one jim man clark uh, any chance that cersei lets the night king and the white walkers loose below the wall on purpose hoping they will destroy danny for her I, I don't i don't think these guys make deals or would even i think whatever they see they wipe out i don't think yeah. they're gonna like you can't reason with this dude that's what i'm saying i mean yeah. right i think <clears throat> my feeling about what's going on with cersei is i feel like she's going to attempt to ally herself with daenerys to take on the white walkers for and now. then yeah, for right. now for and now. then yeah. kill her mm -hmm. from the inside yeah. much like the lannisters did yeah. with her father before yeah, her yeah. so all right that's it uh let's do a pick of the day if you could pick a tv chef to cook for you who would it be David Griffin. B.B. Flay. Oh, B.B. Flay. 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 Oh, wait, like this? Be like that? Like a TV person? Oh, it could be, oh, it could be no. like a like TV a personality. Like a real chef, TV yeah. personality? Yeah. A, like an, an Iron Chef? Any of those people? Bobby Flay, yeah, because he, he is an Iron Chef, uh, American Iron Chef, and he also, like, he has a Southwestern flair, so yeah, Bobby Flay all there the way. There you go. Yeah. I mean, obviously yeah, Bob from Bob's Burgers, but uh, yeah. also uh, Ted Allen, who was originally the chef on Queer Eye for the Straight Guy and oh, then just yeah. chopped. Yeah, yeah. He, I feel like he'd be fun okay. to hang out with. We're chef from South Park. <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> Jules. Hello, hello, children. children. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, if I was going to get a chef, uh, I, I, I know this is stupid, but I would go Guy Fieri because the dude always seems to just be eating just like crappy street food. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm into that idea. Probably not good for your heart. But yeah, yeah, terrible yeah. for your heart. <laughs> Maybe Mario Vitale in a close right, second. Yeah. Just good, fat Italian man living the dream. <laughs> All right, guys, that'll do it for us here on a Monday. Going up on a Monday, Clatter TV Talk will be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. PST. David Griffin will be here. Grace Hancock will be here. Mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of fun stuff like Preacher and some news and who knows. Great British breakdown. Before we get out of here, David, where can the good people find you on the internet? Find me on Instagram and 
Twitter at Griffin D E coming out hot, coming in hot every day. <laughs> Emma Fife. Emma you can Fife. Find me all over the internet at my name, Emma Fife, E M M A F Y F F E. Also tonight on After Buzz TV at nine o'clock PM, we'll be continuing to talk about the sec- third season of Netflix Voltron, and we will have Joaquin mm-hmm. DeSantos and Lauren Montgomery joining nice. us. Nice. So yeah, you should come check show. it out. All right, I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. We'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. PST, right here on Collider Video. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.